Hi everyone, if you're just new to us, don't forget to like and subscribe to our show. Right now, it's Logan Raj right here on the RSS with HD. Hi, welcome to the RSS with HC with myself, Rashid Saleh, and as usual, my partner in crime, Harish Joel, in a very nice red Amnik shirt. Brighter than your usual self. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm more excited uh, with our guest today. Yes, we're to going to get him straight on. Uh, let's, let's meet up with, look at him, Logan Raj, look at him. He's looking really mature now. You know, not that boyish. <laughs> boyish uh, poster boy that we're so used to seeing all those years and he's he's still looking good well you know the the beard's making him much more mature don't know whether he he's as mature as he used uh, as he, you you told me harish what do you think nah, logan the problem with rashid is that he can't <laughs> grow a beard so he gets jealous whenever he sees anyone's oh, with, anyone with a beard not jealous so, at don't all mind him. not yeah. jealous at all <laughs> trust me not jealous at all <laughs> okay logan welcome <laughs> Welcome and so nice to see you after so 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 long. Yes. Thank you. I'm just stroking, just stroking my beard to <laughs> evoke some of the envy from Rashid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Envious. Oh dear. So how you been? Uh, what what what's uh, what's been uh, going gone? Well, actually, let's let's just start. How are you? <laughs> oh, I've been good. The, um, it's just turned into winter here. Um, in Melbourne, where I'm based right now, so it's been good. Transition from sports to the corporate world, so it's uh, it's been very interesting, very challenging, but interesting none nonetheless. All right, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Harish do all the grilling because uh, I like to watch this and, and enjoy the show. See you in a bit. <laughs> I, I like the use of the word also. grilling. Yeah. Uh, Logan, uh, could you just? Uh, Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing in Melbourne and, you know, where you're attached to at the moment. Just a brief description of what you're, I mean, everyone knows you in back home as the um, former international hockey player. Um, you were once the CEO of uh, Malaysian Hockey Confederation. But today, um, what's new with Logan Raj? Well, so right now I work as the, uh, I work for a utility service provider. Uh, so we have about 2,000 people working for a company. And we primarily service all the major asset owners, electricity and gas asset owners in Australia, more so in Victoria, where I'm based. So I am the head of strategy for the entire group. So yeah, it's a large portfolio. I just transitioned into the position about a year ago. I report directly to the managing director. And it's been good, very challenging gig. We do about close to a billion dollars a year in terms of revenue. So uh, it's a whole new landscape as opposed to sports industry where it's primarily looking after the interests of sport and trying to make sure that the sport gives, uh, gains enough traction within the local community as well as internationally. So while there are similarities there are uh, in terms of working with different sets of uh, stakeholders, the difference is in terms of the KPIs that we have, what we're trying to achieve as a business as opposed to when we run a sports organization. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing, uh, but, apart from having uh, and enjoying the, the weather here. Yeah, but, but Logan, when you speak about, uh, you know, sports and, and business, I mean, at the end of the day, sports today is a business. And uh, I, I believe that there is no difference, to, to be honest. It's just that what you're selling is different. Uh, and your, your, what you're, you know, taking care of is different. So right now, you're taking care of utilities, you know, you're taking care of stuff with different, uh, a different direction. But the, the, it's based on the same thing, which is projection to make money and uh, to move forward. So, um, do, do you think there's a very big difference between running a sports association as what you've done uh, in the past with the Malaysian Hockey Confederation and what you're doing now? Well, in principle, they're basically the same. So, I think yeah. you're right. We're selling a product or a service and yeah. we're trying to make sure that people buy into our product or service, mm -hmm. which is the same in sport as well as in business. But like I said, the metrics is obviously different. So, as a chief executive officer, my role previously was to ensure that the administration is run appropriately, following all the governance and all this, the rules and, I mean, the rules and procedures has been set, making sure it's 
it's been socialized the effort that we've you know put forward making sure the teams are well taken care of because ultimately the product is uh, the the entity that will bring in revenue or in terms of uh, money sponsorship to the organization would be the national team per se mm-hmm. so and then use that money to sort of build the portfolio of the sport by working with grassroots and development programs but in terms of business it's completely different it's more kind of dry mm-hmm. it's more making sure your product sells you get a you get revenue you look after your people by paying them appropriate salaries and then making making sure that there's continuity in your program so while the principle is the same like i said the metrics is always different because it's a more well i believe it's a more noble effort when you run a sports organization because it's primarily driven by the the effort of trying to get people together to participate in the sports so that they're healthier live a better lifestyle and then there's also a sense of attachment if you represent the country because in this case it's more making sure the business is safe so it's more looking after specific sets of stakeholders that own the business as opposed to a sports association where you're looking after the interest and the reputation of your country per se so the pressure is different the uh, level of exposure you get is different i have a lot of exposure when i was working as chief executive officer i'm you know constantly being interviewed asked you know people are always asking my opinions and all that but in this case it's more siloed so the view can be a lot more myopic and your strategic direction can be more centered around your business rather than sports the political landscape that's, that revolves around sports as you should know yeah um, and so yeah so it, it's same in principle but in terms of measure and and the way it's being operated it can differ okay b- based on what you've just mentioned um do you still keep tabs on what's happening in malaysia especially about hockey yeah look because hockey is always going to be in my blood so okay. uh, you know i i as much as i have served the association before i can also be one of its uh, biggest critic but i try to keep my uh, opinions to people who can actually make a difference so i do have conversations with the president once in a while to share my opinion mm-hmm. with uh, some of the people who are still involved in the sport mm-hmm. share my ideas but then like i said um even when i was part of the organization it, i i completely trust the people who run the organization although our points of view may be different but mm-hmm. i think everyone is out there to make to make you know something good to build the sport so, yeah Okay, Logan. Look, um, you saw life as a player. Mm-hmm. I, I meant hockey, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You were a player. You graduated to become an administrator. Um, and today you're, you're you're a critic, so to speak. But you're you're a passionate critic. Uh, I, I would like to term you as that, yeah. Now, what is wrong with hockey or sports in Malaysia? And I don't want you to just tell me what's wrong with it, but how can we quickly fix it i think the solutions are more important than anything else i think we get a lot of people just criticizing but not offering any solutions so yeah what 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 are your thoughts so i mean for us to just drill into what's wrong with sports uh, that will probably take a much longer conversation that we're going to have right now yeah pr- probably a but, year i think <laughs> yeah i know yeah, and if that conversation is held every day right but uh, <laughs> true Uh-huh. So, and to to apply a quick fix, that's I think that's pretty um, presumptuous because it's deeply rooted. I mean, in comparison, let's say in Australia right now where I'm at, and you know Australia is a really small country. Uh, they have they don't have a, a large population, say like the United like America, mm-hmm. but in specific sports, particularly hockey, they've been doing really well. They don't travel as much as some of the other countries do. India travels a lot. In fact. Japan and some of the other countries they travel a lot European countries can play across you know the, the boundaries are, I mean other countries are you know just a boundary away you know right next door so they can literally travel all over Europe to play against each other at, at a very uh, low cost base but Australia is pretty much siloed and you have New Zealand and the gap between Australia and New Zealand albeit is not that far it's still apparent so it's the culture here is very outdoor driven it's very competitive It's, it's a sporting culture here. So kids from a very young age, you can see them in parks, running around. In fact, the government, although spe- spe- sorry, specifically in this period of time when there's COVID, they still encourage you to exercise. 
Mm-hmm. So it's a culture that's being built, and it takes a long time for for this culture to be ingrained. Because it's a lot about work-life balance here. So even when I started working here, I was trying to make sure that I did my work very well. So I worked long hours. I try to focus a lot on work. Yet my bosses keep telling me, don't play a sport, go to the gym. You need work-life balance. So they actually encourage this even at the later stages of your life. Okay. So I'm saying that, well, we can put administrative measures, we can put controls, we can dump, dump in more money, we can bring in X players. You can do all these kind of things, but from a cultural standpoint, we need to change the culture. And that's a long drawn process. So I think KJ started off this whole principle or this whole concept of having a national sports day. And then he himself was being seen as a person who's actively involved in sports. So that's a good way to start cultivating this habit, but it has to start right down from the grassroots. So like I said, um, well, you you can have short fixes, but that's not going to actually change the, the whole landscape much. So I, I don't really think that's a quick fix. Um, you know, so that's that's my point of view. Okay, but when, when you say there's no... That, okay, I agree with you in a, in the sense that there's no quick fix to anything. Um, it's it's a generational problem. It's, it's over the years. Um, it's something that I, I hate to hear when the elders say during my time, but yet it is the diseases of during their time that has culminated to what it is today. You know, we've, we've never really stopped and looked and uh, to fix things. We, we just let things happen as it is. And we, we just go back to history. Now, moving forward, grassroots development is key. Yet, we don't really see much emphasis on grassroots. Whenever we come to sports associations, even at the state level, it's always, you know, the elite team, the main team, but never about grassroots. Grassroots is all about unearthing talents. And if we don't have grassroots, we don't have talents. What are your thoughts about grassroots development in Malaysia comparing to what you've just mentioned um, to the scene in Australia, whereby it's really community driven? It's everyone in the family. I believe in Australia, everyone in the family is involved in some form of sport or the other, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, which is precisely your, the, the point you just uh, mentioned. So, mm-hmm. when I say, like I said before, you know, when you're running a sports organization, you are about selling a product. And the most prominent product that you can sell is your national team. So, mm-hmm. definitely, you're going to put in all the effort that you can to make sure the national team or set it up for success so that they can bring glory to the nation. And then, in the same vein, you can use this success to go to specific sponsors and then draw their interest. So, and sponsors are always constantly looking for return on investment. So, they want a product that has a large, you know, a bigger profile, more visibility. So, they will not invest in something that's obviously not going to give you much uh, visibility in terms of airtime and all that. So, it's a, it's a cultural shift for two things, right? In, in two, two areas. So, like, like you just said, here it's community driven, the parents, the family get involved so that kids are playing sports and when they are good in a particular sport, they start investing in the kids. So it's it's more family trying to support their children or the younger generation to excel in sports or at least make sports part of their living culture. So that's that's the family part. That's something that we can do as individuals with our family. But then from a corporate point of view, I think it's also time now for corporate companies, yes, to invest a large amount of money in the national team because that gives you solid return of investment. And it also gives you enough uh, visibility for your brand. But to sort of channel their corporate social responsibility efforts into development of uh, sports at the grassroots level, because not only does this um, help the nation in its entirety, raise the profile of the way we live, you know, a more healthy country, uh, a more healthy population. But it's also an an avenue for us to culturally integrate the varied races that we have. You and I both know that sports is one of the best integration to to bring cultures together, to bring different races together. And, you know, what's apparent with the world right now is the more you get involved in effort that can actually draw different sets of people together, the better. So I think sports is an ideal way, and that is where I think big corporations can play a, a part. So it's not so much just investing in a, in a product that can give you better returns in terms of 
viewership, visibility. It's also about going down into the ground, helping it, uh, helping sports develop at that grassroots level, and then providing an actual societal impact. So yeah, that's that's where I think. Okay, uh, Logan, but, need to happen. but but here's the thing, yeah. You speak about ROI, you speak about visibility, but the only thing we hear or see about hockey right now um, in Malaysia is only negative stuff. You know, where are the efforts to actually promote the players, to promote the team? Do you see that? Or is it, we are, we are looking at it at a very biased view, where you see it that we don't? I mean, your, your views, please. Well, I think um, in, in, in saying that it's primarily negative, it has to be tied into the results that the national team has been achieving so far. So, you know, at, at one point when the women's team were doing really, really well, there was a lot of positive um, news about about the Malaysian women's team, and then obviously there are some di- disagreements that happened about the selection of the coach and Dharma not being there, and then further to that, our sort of lack of performance in some of the international tournaments that we participated in, particularly around the qualifiers for the Olympics where we did not qualify again. So all these will naturally have um, some negative impact to hockey per se. But if you ask me if there's if there's work to be done in terms of making sure that the players gain better profile, more positive news being imparted to the public about Malaysian hockey, well I think the Malaysian Hockey Confederation can do uh, better in that space as in all organizations within within uh, that's involved in sports within our country. I also think um, people from the press Every other parts of the, every other associated stakeholder can also support in bringing in bringing some positive light to the sport. But it is difficult now because, like I said, if the success is low, people are trying to unpick and and, and I know what the press is trying to do out of the best interest of their heart is try and support the sport and unearth what they think um, is an issue, which should be done. But maybe Malaysian hockey and the press should work together. To sort of come up with a campaign so that the players get due recognition as well as the confederation gets enough information so that they can make changes where required. Right. Uh, I, I I'm gonna have to like uh, cut cut in there. Uh, I have I only have one question before we move mm-hmm. on to the really serious bit of the the quiz. Oh, did I say quiz? <laughs> um, that, that one question is um, where did you get that jacket? Oh, Jojo. Um, DA, Jojo Armani. Yeah. Okay, because you know, even even from that angle, if you you know, it looks re- it looks really good on you. I mean, this is from a, a guy to a guy kind of compliment. Okay, anyway, <laughs> okay. Right, moving along, uh, let's let's get to the uh, the uh, that section where you know we 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 do the proper grilling. All right, Harris, are you ready for that? Or rather, yes. Logan, are you ready? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, uh, hope- Logan. Yeah. It's just you just have to answer one word um, based on, on on this. It's just for fun and uh, yeah. Um, let's 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 take it away. So um, first question to you, yeah. If not a hockey player, would Logan Raj be an underwear model or a TikTok sensation? TikTok sensation. <laughs> okay. What is one thing you hated about hockey when you were a player? Training. <laughs> what is one thing you miss about Malaysia? Food. Why do everyone say that? But anyway. <clears throat> have you tried the food in Melbourne? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Hey, it's better than Sydney and way better than Canberra. Okay. <laughs> of course. <anyway. laughs> There's nothing there. Okay, last question. <clears throat> Would you contest against MH? See President Datuk Sri Subhan Kamal for the President's post? No. Okay. That's it from me. Wow. That was, you know, that's, I think you were the, the first guest that was very sure about what your answers were. Because a lot of them were like, <laughs> had to really think. But I, I suppose the questioning, the quiz questions were, were you, you gave him some easy ones. So, ah, oh well, next time, next time. Maybe we'll get, we'll get his brother instead. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll say underwear model. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Logan, uh, b- b- before you go and before Rashid says goodbye, um, uh, just re- just a gentle reminder. Um, you know your article for twenty two thirteen. If you are free, uh, kindly <laughs> contribute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Slogan, for, for joining us. Uh, for those of you out there, uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe and like to us. Thank you also to uh, Amnik, our um, apparel sponsor for the RSS with HD. It's really good seeing you, Logan. Uh, do take care of yourself. Stay safe. Yep. Uh, and, you know, uh, we look forward to more and more good news from you uh, uh, down, down under. Uh, but, you know, enjoy the jacket, enjoy the beard. And uh, from all of us here at the <laughs> RSS HD, Yes, thank you, and we'll see you guys next edition of the RSS. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.